and we come into our meditation for all seven chakras and um, we started well obviously we started seven weeks ago time goes so quick um, so we started with the root and we worked the way up the body right up to the crown chakra and um, we kind of concentrated and visualized on each one individually but today we're going to go through the whole seven chakras energy centers um, that are so important to our vitality our life force the quality of life we have and it goes far deeper than just some kind of esoteric um, fantasy visualization of a color etc these these centers of um, energy exist in our bodies and we can really enhance our health and well-being by occasionally meditating on these areas to keep the energy flow um, going nice and freely to make sure there are no blockages because we all get blocked in in some places at some times sometimes it's from past trauma things that have stuck in the body it could be a physical trauma emotional trauma even psychological trauma they get stuck in our system they, they sort of almost get when you feel a real trauma or a huge accident or a massive loss of grief it affects our every cell it really affects our every cell and you know we tend to in western cultures think um, pull yourself together oh we all get problems oh you know um, you know you'll get over it you know we don't sometimes not that we want to dwell on those things but sometimes we need to accommodate the space to heal from them as opposed to pushing them away and battling through it's the same with stress we've got a culture that tends to embrace uh, battling through going with will power um, you, you know that um, <clears throat> certainly in certain institutions in our culture like I don't know the military or whatever you know um, feelings and um, you know maybe something that could be classed as mental illness is seen as as a weakness you know that you've got to battle through you've got to pull yourself together you know you're in this situation and the only way to do it is to plow on and obviously to a certain degree we all need to do that on on certain occasions in our lives but there are also occasions when we need to just sit back acknowledge what we're going through feel the feelings express the feelings and allow enough space in our lives for things to heal and manage to get back to a certain level of equilibrium and sometimes that means we have to go to the doctor sometimes we need a medical intervention sometimes we need uh, an operation um, or sometimes we just need to rest we just need to rest you know the nervous system goes into overdrive and everything becomes an effort um, and we feel stuck that we can't move that we can't move forward with our lives and is it always going to be like this well, the answer is no it's not always going to be like that but by repressing it um, and not accommodating the space in your life for it it can linger in the body it can linger in the mind it can linger in the heart and it takes up literally takes up space you know that thing I'm sure we've all been in this situation at one stage in our lives or another where we may have um, a loved one you know like a romantic love let's say and for whatever reason that doesn't go according to plan and there's a breakdown in the relationship and there's a breakup of the relationship ultimately and sometimes we can feel there's a huge gap a huge void and how do I fill it how do I fill that that gap and that void and we can go into another relationship too quickly just to fill the gap in ourselves just because we can't sit with our aloneness it doesn't necessarily mean loneliness it's our aloneness well really in life we are nearly always alone we're always here we can always be alone in one instance or another um, but when you don't let the other person go or the other issue go completely whether it's an illness an injury a heartbreak whatever you're never really allowing enough space to completely heal for yourself you're just filling it up with the next thing so working on the chakra um, 
energy centers which um but we are going to meditate on them today they go very deep they are very very um kind of powerful practices and we'll really get into that during the course and uh, there'll be um, an opportunity to ask questions because I feel I need to do it on a zoom um, kind of you know methodology as opposed to Facebook so that people can feel they're part of a course and ask um, live questions um, and that kind of thing so let, let's start the uh, meditation for today if you're gonna I'm just gonna go and absolutely perfectly fine and let's just get into our yogic space. So yeah, making sure that maybe you're in a place where you won't be disturbed, where you won't have to run and answer the phone or do any of those things. So just closing your eyes and finding your nice, quiet, Seat. Asana means seat. You know, we use it as the sort of generic term for postures in yoga, but it actually means seat. Um, asan, seat. And of course, the postures that we practice in yoga, the yogic perspective on those postures is about energy. It's not particularly about the shape you create. But it's about creating a shape that allows energy in specific pathways but ultimately the goal the aim is to make your body strong and resilient and flexible so that you can sit in your meditation posture with ease Yoga is all about ease, not dis-ease. Yeah, we call it disease in the West, dis-ease, where there is a lack of ease in the body. So we are looking for ease. We're not looking to feel uncomfortable in our postures. We're looking for the space where we feel completely aligned and still and at peace. We look to sit on the sit bones or the knees and we need to think of them as our solid foundation on the earth. While we are alive in these bodies, we are rooted and connected with the earth. And the more connected with the earth we become, the more stable and resilient we become. So never losing that kind of blood connection that Mother Earth who gave us birth, never losing that stabling root connection with the Earth, either through the sit bones or the feet when you're standing, or the knees when you're kneeling up in meditation. And if you get the chance, every opportunity you can, whether it's in your own grounds, your own garden, on the beach, in the park, to walk and connect with the Earth letting the feet actually touch the earth. You know how wonderful it feels to walk barefoot in the sand or to walk barefoot on cool grass, connecting with the earth, taking that opportunity at every possible juncture, you know, walking barefoot in the house even if the floor allows it. So your root is stable like a tree you feel that the roots are going down through the earth. Nothing can shake you. You're as strong and sturdy as a mountain at your base. Your spine is rising up. Tall and strong, but not rigid. Every inhalation you create space. So you create space along the spinal column don't have to kind of push the spine up just think of the space coming in on the inhalation and every exhalation just a tiny contraction of the belly it doesn't have to be a big deal making you feel strong helping the spine supporting it these tiny contractions of the belly over time on the exhalation will strengthen your inner core 
that kind of girdle that holds you up around the front, the side. So you're not just talking about your six pack, pelvic floor, rectus abdominis, you know, your lats, the whole girdle. If you had a girdle on one of those corsets, this is your core. It doesn't just affect the belly. So a tiny, tiny contraction of the belly supports the back. And it's a great habit to get into during your Hatha yoga practice. Doesn't have to be aggressive. Doesn't have to be aggressive at all. Over time, you will strengthen the core on your exhalation by tiny contraction. So bringing the attention again to the body strong strong backbone rising up towards the sky with the crown you soften your shoulders down and away from your ears and you allow yourself to just be for a moment stepping into that present moment is an actual thing it's not just Eckhart Tolle going on with gobbledygook you step into the present moment with your heart, mind and soul, with your body. And notice the quality of the moment. You're here, just sitting in your nice posture, quietening down, settling down, embracing the present moment. Because it's the only moment you have. is the only moment you can guarantee is the moment you are in. Allowing the breath to be cool right through the central of the nostrils, right through the middle. So you're just inhaling there. You're exhaling through the nostrils with a tiny contraction of the belly to remember that you're supporting your back. And it also helps you empty the lungs completely. So you get into that habit of deep, full, mindful breaths. We are really excruciatingly bad at deep breath in the West. We shallow breathe all of the time. So we don't get the maximum oxygen into our cells, into our blood, into our vital organs, into our brain. The life force on which we ride is the breath. From beginning to the end, we are breathing. But conscious breathing has a different impact. So consciously breathing. Just notice, please, how you feel in the body. What is going on? Do you need to shift your position? I am going to shift mine. Now is the time to change your position if you need to. Not looking for niggles, just allowing them to be. But if you need to accommodate something that is uncomfortable, please do so. Don't struggle. The beautiful, soft, open space of the heart on the front body so that the ribs can expand and contract and the lungs can fill and empty to their maximum capacity. Noticing the aliveness in the body. I ask this question many times, how do you know you're alive? What do you feel in your body? It might be the subtle rise and fall of the breath in the abdomen, in the chest. It might be the actual tingling feeling in your hands, your fingers. When you bring the focus there, you will feel something without a doubt. Maybe there's a little anxiety in the tummy. Maybe there's a little knot in your chest. Maybe something is not quite right today. Just noticing it initially. Maybe you feel tired, or you feel cold, or too warm, or maybe you have a headache. You know, just noticing these things. The 
They are all signals that you are alive. But the vibrance in the body can be noticed when you focus. You take the attention to the right hand, just the right hand. Notice the sensations in the right hand. All the way up the right forearm, the right elbow, the right upper arm. Just bring the attention, the focus, paying attention is your consciousness. It's always there, but we're not always conscious of our consciousness, yeah? It's one of those things that slips away. Up to the top right shoulder. Now the whole arm, bring your attention to the whole arm. And notice with your eyes closed and your mind's eye focusing that the aliveness is in your whole right arm that you probably don't notice. It's there. The sensations are there. Now shift to the left hand. Put your whole attention onto the left hand the left wrist, the left forearm, the left elbow, the left upper arm and the left shoulder. Now take the attention to the whole arm from the top of the fingernail on the third finger all the way up to the top of the shoulder, the whole arm. Now you can let go. So that was just a partial body scan. Just to help you realize that when you step into the present moment, you can use lots of different ways to do that. It could be just focusing on the breath, Noticing the breath, rise and fall. It could be noticing sensations in the body. It could be you're noticing your sensory perception that goes beyond sight, external sight. You may want to concentrate on what you can hear near and far. It's a wonderful practice to do that, especially if you are sitting in a beautiful garden and you are blessed with birds, not much traffic, the bees buzzing, these things can bring you into the present moment and they bring a sense of peace, a sense of aliveness, just focusing on the sounds of the birds, the insects, the bees, about their duty. So you move from that external sensory perception and you bring it inside. And this is one of the beautiful things about meditation. It's not that you're doing anything. It's not that you're doing it right. Oh, I can't meditate. I can't do it right. It's already in you. You just need to wake up to the fact that you can go inside and be peaceful. And use the tools in the meditation toolkit to help bring you into that space of being. So bring in your hearing sensory perception inside. What can you really focus on with one pointed focus? Dharana, Dhyana, they will not say in yoga, in classical tradition, authentic yoga, they will never say yoga and meditation. Meditation is part of yoga. The aim is samadhi. The aim is oneness with you. The aim is not to stand on your head. 
that's just part of the process of strengthening of learning so bringing the whole sensory perception inside now no external sounds no external smells nothing to see outside the whole world is in your mind and the whole universe is in you you are the universe inside and you're very 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 honored to be connected with the whole universe we're not alone We're not part of a duality, only if we choose. So in your beautiful, quiet, inside space, just reaffirm your strong, straight back, your open front, your smooth, even breath, your crown towards the heavens, your roots towards your earth, keeping you anchored keeping you steady, like letting you fly in all directions as your higher consciousness reaches for the sky, your higher power, your best self, the best person you can be. No need for competition, no need to compare. It's about you and how you react with yourself, the world you're around you, and with your higher power. Bring your attention to your root chakra, the Muladhara chakra. Think of where you are rooted to the earth. Where are you rooted to the earth? The physical space is around the pelvic floor or the base of the spine, whichever serves you best. Beautiful, strong, rooted chakra, keeping you secure, keeping you stable, keeping you rooted firm in the earth. And grow the colour red. Beautiful, deep red, sinking you into the earth. Strong foundation. We are nothing without a strong foundation. Unshakable, like a mountain. Moving up slowly along the spinal column or the front body, however suits you, to the space between the hips in the pelvic gurgle. That space between the hips, right deep, deep down into the middle of the pelvic bowl. Your Swadhisthana Chakra, your center of creativity. And give this a beautiful, beautiful visual of deep, deep burnt orange. And let it spread. Let it fill the whole of your pelvic bowl. Let it fill the pelvic gurgle. Deeply spreading. Like the sun when it sets, you know, just before it set, that beautiful burnt orange, almost red, but it's a bit more orange. Or even like the fruit, that orange, it's that orange. Bringing that into the pelvic bowl, the pelvic gurgle, filling you up. Your creativity, your center of creativity. Moving up slightly now to just above the navel, to your solar plexus area just about an inch or two above the navel to your manapur chakra 
um, solar plexus is acute to the color. The digestive area, area of strength could be an area where you feel your gut brain, your intuition, your second brain. And bring the color of the sun there. And grow the sunlight in your manapur area. Just growing that colour, making it strong and shine, bringing a little gloss and polish to the chakra, to the energy centre, giving it the focus. It's like when you focused on your hands, when you focused on the arms, you brought energy there. You sensed you were alive, you sensed the arms existed. Well, you can also bring the mind to your chakras. Grow the sense of sunlight there in the solar plexus and the manapur chakra. Let it grow. It doesn't have to be a huge effort. Make sure your shoulders are relaxed. Make sure your hands are just on your lap. Could be in the mudra of your choice. Mine are just linked together with my right hand on top of my left. And bring your attention now up again, up the front body or back body, whichever suits you, to your heart. Even saying the word heart has an effect on my body. I can feel the energy there. The centre of your chest. The engine house of your whole system, the pump that keeps on pumping life around your body never stops during your life on this earth it never stops keeps working when you're conscious of it and when you're not conscious of it it's working it needs a little love it needs to be sent energy now and again to tell it you know it's fine slow down rest Giving it enough space, you know, not feeling those glitches, those knots, those tightnesses we can feel in and around the heart. From past transgressions, from past times when we didn't say sorry, when we didn't forgive, when we were unkind to others and ourselves, when we weren't wholehearted, and we weren't open-hearted. These things can stick in and around this area. Grow the colour green, like emerald green. Some people choose rose pink. Whatever works for you, there's no right or wrong. Whatever comes naturally is perfect. Grow this colour of your choice. Grow it until it shines and sparkles allowing all of the centers in and around the heart to shine forth, to take up their space, to not hide, to not shun, to come forward and shine. Beautiful emerald green, sparkling across the whole chest, growing and pulsating and allowing the heart to relax. This is where we hold all of our emotions, good and bad. Of course there's going to be things that are going to block it from time to time. We close off our hearts when we've been hurt. We close off our hearts when we're in fear. We close off our hearts when we're in a space of lack. Fill the heart with abundance. Let it feel joy, compassion, empathy, forgiveness. This is a natural state for the heart to be free and open. Let it shine. When it shines, you shine. Anahata chakra, the heart center. You feel it. Let it feel free, like you've taken some cool air in. Let it feel open and spacious. Now 
coming up to the throat. The throat chakra, the area around where the thyroid, the little butterfly thyroid sits. And you can make it a sky blue if you like to. These things come to people naturally. I don't like to dictate. We have a color representation for each chakra. But who's to say that's right for everyone? You can think of a sky blue around the throat. Clear, no clouds. The center that we can, you know, also feel stuck around, you know, words get stuck in our throat. We become tongue-tied because we accommodate other people's needs first sometimes. Or we're afraid that our truth will hurt somebody else or they will judge us. So this chakra becomes a little bit muddy, a little bit dark when we are not standing in our truth. Or when we knowingly tell an untruth. Not just petty lies, everyday lies that sometimes people have to do to accommodate this and that. Standing in our real honorable truth, our integrity. Saying one thing and meaning another. Or using harsh words, unkind words, criticizing, judging as a first response. Some people, their first response is to criticize and judge, complaining, whinging. Woe is me. Being more conscious of your words. Being more conscious of the way you speak to yourself. So outward communication as well as inward communication. How we speak to ourselves. Clearing away the habitual negative, almost diatribe that we have for ourselves. Feeling the blue sky expand and open out the throat chakra. Allowing us to feel the truth, step into it, lean into it, express it in kindness. Even our truth when it's not palatable to somebody else can be uttered in kindness. It doesn't have to be harsh. But you don't have to eat your words. All of these things we say, the impact, maybe saying too much, oversharing, not having boundaries about what you say, continual chatter, working on the throat chakra to free up the thyroid, to free up the truth, bringing it the attention it deserves. Singing, humming, chanting, praying, poetry, reciting, all of these things, beautiful practices for raising the vibration of the throat chakra. Because when we free the throat chakra and we stand in our truth, it frees the heart. It removes the burden. It closes off the fear. Move your position if you need to before we go to the third eye. You don't have to sit in the same position for the whole time because it's a long time. So, allowing the blue to change maybe into a more pinky purple colour if that feels good. Could be a darker blue as we move up to the Anyama Chakra, the third eye in between the brow, slightly above the brow line. 
slightly above the ground line where some Indian people put their bindu. This is to not just look pretty and beautiful, which it does, the women are stunning, they look beautiful, but it's about the point of entry of consciousness. It means something. So thinking of the third eye there, and you may have read this, that, you know, about third eye open, third eye closed. I invite you, if you ever read these things, to not pay too much attention. Your third eye is always looking inside. It's always looking inside if you are aware of it. If you are not aware of it, then it's totally closed off because you're not aware of it. So think it as um, an entry point of your consciousness. It doesn't have to be represented by the form of an eye. It's where you look inside to you. Your self-contemplation, your self-examination, swadhyaya. It's when you are looking at how you are being in the world. What is your part in this? What are you contributing? Not complaining about everyone else. What about you? What are you doing? Not in a negative way, not in a judgmental way, but in an honest and open self-evaluating way, looking inside. We say it sometimes in our culture, you know, look at the man in the mirror. Or we say people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Do you mean these? We know these things. Being totally aware of not just what you're doing wrong or right, but at the wonder of what you are. The joyous wonder of being alive on the earth, contributing to a wonderful experience of your life. Looking inside and finding gratitude for what you are and what you have. Looking for the abundance of you that goes beyond your body, that goes beyond your title, that goes beyond your identity in the world. The miracle that you are. Just keeping a perspective of looking inside. It doesn't have to be a judgmental perspective. You're not always wrong. But you're not always right. Keeping a balance. This is your intuition. This is what you know in your gut. Yeah, This chakra and the Manipur chakra, they know. They know the truth of what you are and who you are. But your conscious everyday thinking brain doesn't. Or you could say your unconscious everyday thinking brain. So having a practice in meditation that brings you back, brings you back to yourself, the self that exists beyond your skin and bones and blood and what color your hair is today and whether you like these shoes and what you're going to plant next and you've got to take your dog for a walk. All of those things are wonderful. They are the trappings of our lives and they're for the most part absolutely wonderful. But also being aware and paying attention to the fact that you are a divine being. You go way beyond what dress you're going to put on this morning. Or what trainers you want to take running with you. You are a divine being and you've been a divine being since you came into the world. 
you are what lies beyond. And it's pure bliss. It's wonderful. And when you hear people say, oh, I need to come home to myself, and it may sound a little bit woo-woo and all those things, this is what they are expressing. Coming back to what we were born to be. We weren't born to be miserable and self harming and self-judging and criticizing, we were born to be happy. So choose to be happy. So allowing your intuition to guide you, allowing the real truth that you know deep inside to express itself. Moving up now to the crown. The crown chakra. We're elevating, you see, with the chakras. We're starting with our bodily roots to the earth. And we get to the heart and the throat. And these really are linked to the physical form, our experience in our physical form on earth. And then we start rising up until we get to the crown chakra. And this is the chakra that really does help us express and connect to our higher power. We go to our highest selves, not our low selves, not our animalistic selves, not to our reptilian brains and instincts and urges like animals grunting. We move up through the chakra system to our higher power where we show reverence and appreciation and gratitude for our link with the divine, for our link with the cosmos, universe. You can call it God. I'm not afraid of the word. Some people are where you link with the God of your own understanding. And this light can be beautiful white, dazzling white light of the sun when it's, you know, at its highest in a June day, that dazzling white sunshine. All around the crown, the top of your head, rising upwards towards the heavens, keeping you connected upward, not letting you slip down. Your pure consciousness, your awareness, the moment that you step into that pure consciousness, your world is at right. No need for fear, no need for doubt, uncertainty, let it go, hand it over, hand it over to God, hand it over to your higher power, hand it over to the divine, just hand it over, don't hold on to it, let it go, you know, let it go. There is a, p a power beyond us that we can tap into inside ourselves that we can trust. Total trust in your own higher power. None of the 12 step programs, none of them. And there are hundreds and thousands of them, millions of people in addiction of one kind and another in this world today, and it's growing. None of those 12 steps work without the ability to tap into your higher power without the ability to hand over to a higher power when you are in distress. It's a very beautiful, liberating practice to hand over to your higher power. We can't do everything, we're just human. We just go off on a loop thinking about things over and over and over and over again. We desperately need that connection to the higher power. And it's a beautiful thing.
and it costs nothing and it's always there. It doesn't let you down. It doesn't let you down. So one more time, recognising the seven chakras, the root, the red, the swadhisthana, in the pelvic bowl, between the hips, the orange, the manipur, the sun, the solar plexus. Anahata, the green or rose pink at your heart, the throat, sky blue, what, what more beautiful colour could you have for open, clear, truthful communication, sky blue at the throat. The third eye, your intuition, could be indigo, could be violet. Whatever, whatever looks inside and turns the light on to who you really are, who you really are, and your higher power, your divine, your bliss, pure consciousness, pure awareness. You can step into it at any time, any time. So we're just going to take three breaths together. We're going to breathe into the root all the way up to the crown chakra and we're going to breathe out all the way back down. We're just going to do this three times. So make sure you're in a comfortable position, change your legs if you need to. I ask you to bring your hands to your heart. Fingers pointing skyward. We're breathing in from the root all the way to the heart. Uh, crown chakra and we're breathing out all the way back down. So breathe out first please. Breathing in. Out. Breathing in. Out. Breathing in, out, right out, and drop your head towards your fingertips and just let the neck elongate a little bit and just enjoy a little stretch. And breathe in, and you can open your eyes.